Welcome to my trading room. This is US stocks, day trading, the best edit wave analysis, episode number eight. So today I'm going to take a look at uh, the S&P with you. I'll first take a look at its Ichimoku cloud and then its edit wave labeling. And for the introduction, I wanted to talk about what is happening right now and why I couldn't do more intervention uh, uh, last week. And I'm only managing to do one on Sunday. And that's because I was trading a lot. And we had also the debacle of um, Luna. And I was um, hardcore trading it, which means I went down to the one minute chart and traded it a lot. So you must understand the following. Uh, I, I want to tell you the following. Um, I only were, did get aware about the Luna debacle around 11 a.m. at my place. And then I had to do some research to find out what it's about actually, and if I can trade the asset. And if I want to trade the asset, I had, I had to make that this decision. I, I were aware uh, around 11 a.m. And I think I start traded it, trading it at um, 4 p.m. There's a reason why I tell you the, that time frame. And I stopped uh, about, uh, I start trading uh, uh, around 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. And I went on trading it nonstop until 3 a.m., 4 p.m. So I had around uh, 12 hours to trade it in the best, uh, I think it was less than that, uh, around 10 hours to trade it in the best um, case scenario. Because after those 10 hours, it hit zero. And here's what I found out. I found out that my indicators and my trading style is very, very well suited to extreme fear, to an extreme, when there is extreme volatility. I, I define extreme volatility when you have movement of more than 50% in a half an hour. When you get that, and that's what we did get on Luna, then my trading um, indicators, a wave and my other indicators uh, that I use are extremely, extremely well performing. I had 100% success. I traded Luna to the upside and to the downside. I think I had during those 10 hours, five trades, I went down to the one hour, uh, one minute chart and had five trades. So I had five entry point, five and five exit points. And I had 100% success. All my trades were successful. And each one of them was more than 100%. Sometimes a lot more than 100%. And if I had to do it again, um, I could have done much better. So the thing is, this is a community. And I'm not a, um, an altcoin maximalist. So I don't believe in altcoins from a fundamental uh, perspective. But I do, do not mind trading then when the occasion arrives. I have to be aware that such an occasion arrives. And for me, an occasion is extreme volatility. Extreme volatility is when I perform best. Most people, when they look at extreme volatility, they say, I wouldn't touch it with a stick because they get extremely scared. And to me, it's the opposite. Extreme volatility, makes me uh, extremely performant. I get a, a, a super performer during that time because my indicators perform very well under that con conditions. So you should have told me that there was the Luna debacle because I only uh, were aware at, as I told you at, at 11 a.m. and the next day, 24 hours, uh, less than uh, tw uh, 12 hours later, we hit zero. It was over. So I was only aware 
at 11 a.m. and it maybe went to 2 a.m. in the morning or 3 a.m. in the morning. I don't remember exactly, but around that, uh, that period. So, uh, but if you would have told me, I could have traded it for at least uh, for around two days. So for 48 hours, of course, I cannot trade nonstop during 48 hours. I have to sleep also, but I could have traded it much more and I would have um, super performed. So I would have had close to 100% success, maybe one losing trade, but it would have been very rare. I would have had close to 100% success and I would have, and every one of my position would have been more than 100% gains. So you, you should uh, tell me when something like that happens, when we get extreme volatility in an asset so that I can capitalize on it. Because if I learn it when it's close to over, then, then, um, then I miss out on a lot. But it was very interesting also when we hit zero because that raised a lot of questions that I had to answer, a lot of research that I had to do. Anyways, it was it, for, for me and from a trading perspective, uh, from an intellectual trading perspective, it was a fascinating time. In those, in those minutes uh, taught me a lot. And I had, I don't want to say fun, <laughs> fun yeah, well, it was great. Of course, it's great uh, having uh, that kind of returns in such a short period of time. This year, there were two occasions where you could have made easily or I could have made easily a fortune. If you don't know how to trade well, and if, you, if, you, if you're not at ease in the market, if that's not your thing, if you don't look at chart all day long, then it will be a, a little hard to do it. But the, this year, there were two occasions where I could have made a fortune. When I, make a for, when I, when I mean a fortune, it's, it's easily um, enough to live a couple of, ye of years or a couple of decades, depending on how much capital you want to deploy. Uh, deploy. But I could easily uh, made a killing this year on two assets. The first one was the Russian ruble. So if I would have, I, I told you already, yeah, but if I would have fought it through till the end, and I would have realized that because of the sanctions, the, sanctions, the, the Russian ruble would, would tank, if I would have realized that, I could have traded it and just added trade um, Luna and I would have made a killing on it. I would have made enough to live uh, a couple of years or a couple of decades just on the Russian ruble um, tanking because of the, of the sanctions. Uh, so that would have made me enough to, to live very well during a couple of years or a couple of decades, depending on how much capital I deploy. So the first occasion to make a fortune was the Russian ruble. I did not because I did not go through it. I did not think about the Russian ruble. Um, the only uh, I thought of a couple of things, but uh, nothing uh, that I could have traded. And the only thing that I could actually have traded was the Russian ruble, but I thought about it too late. When I realized it, it, it was too late. So next time I'll, I'll try to not make this, uh, I tried to, to be able to, to make money out of, of such a geopolitical situation, if it happens again. And it might happen again, because uh, there's a lot of stress right now in the markets and in our situation with the conflicts uh, all over the world and all the issues we have. So uh, such a situation might easily happen again. Uh, during the next uh, years. So then uh, the next time I'll, I'll try to, to use it into my advantage and, and capitalize on it, make some money with it. And when I take about some money, I mean a lot of money, uh, as I told you, enough to live a couple of years and that in a very short period of time. And now the second occasion as as you already know, was Luna. Luna was also uh, an occasion to make a fortune. So I, I, it was my first time, so I didn't uh, deploy, uh, deploy as much capital as I should have. Uh, it was still very, uh, very profitable and I'm sitting on some nice gains, but 
I could have done much better if I would have used more capital. Uh, why did I not use more capital? Because it was the first time that I traded a market that is moving more than 50% in 30 minutes. It's the first time that I was trading such a market. And I did not know before I, I tried it how my indicators would perform. So I had to try it, I have to test it. And was still, I was still in a testing phase. So I did not deploy as much capital as I, as I otherwise would have. If I would have got one more day, just one more day of that debacle, then I, the second day I would have increased a lot of my capital and I would have made um, according, um, and I would have made uh, much more money, even more money than I did. So I would just want to tell you that because this is a community, in community, I have more than 80 followers on my free Telegram group and, and I have uh, a couple of subscribers on YouTube I think it's in a couple of hundreds. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't know the numbers, but I think. So that's very nice. <laughs> I'm talking to people. You have eyes and ears. So let's talk and let's let's be smart and let's and let's make some money huh? instead of just uh, being cry babies and crying because Luna is going to zero. You should never have be believed in you uh, Luna for a fundamental perspective and put all your money in it. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy uh, believing in such a thing and putting all your money in it. it. Those altcoins are so bad that I'm not even sure that you can get in them and out again. I don't trust USDT. I would like to use USDT to when I when I when I when I want to hedge my my Bitcoin position. I would like to use USDT huh, as a hedge, but I don't trust in it. I even trust less in, in it than I trust in exchange, exchanges. And I'm still a skeptical of exchanges, even if I know they don't uh, close too, um, too fast, but I'm still scared. I'm scared to open a huge position on an exchange because I don't know if I can close it whenever I want, and I don't know if I get my money back once it's closed. So I'm even scared about exchanges. So, so I, I, I'm paranoid uh, according, uh, according to finance. The only thing I have faith in is Bitcoin because it has three characteristics. I always tell my clients and they never remember. I don't know why it is so hard for them to remember the three characteristics of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is unseasonable, so you cannot seize it. They cannot take it away from you. Bitcoin is extreme rarity there there only will be 21 millions and you cannot change that you cannot change the governing rules and it resists censorships so you can use it um, whenever you want they cannot stop a transaction so you can send your money to whoever you want whenever you want to an exchange to somebody it, it, it does not care about anything. It's just something you can do. It resists censorship. And that and those three characteristics of Bitcoin, which no other asset has, are extremely valuable to me. That's why, and that's why I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, and that's why I believe in, in Bitcoin. So that's, all, that's the only thing I trust. I don't trust USD. Uh, um, with DT. I don't know, mean the, the Luna coin, uh, Tether. I mean Tether. How do you do you write it? USD, I think USD T. It's USD T Tether. And the Luna coin was UST, I think. Yeah? I might be mistaken. Um, so, anyways, I don't trust anyone, I, any altcoin. I don't. I, I don't mind trading them, <laughs> just as I, I did trade Luna, but I don't trust them. I won't sit on a position. I won't marry a position. It's like a girl. You won't make her your wife if you know that uh, that she is crazy and that that it will never work out. You will you won't invest time into a, a person if you know that it will be a disaster. And, and that's my that's my position on icons. I won't I won't be in, in a long relationship with them. I might profit from them from time to time but I will never be in a long position with them. When I mean profit, it's, it's, I mean, I take a position now and I exit it in, um, 
in uh, two hours. That I don't mind doing, okay? Uh, day trading altcoins, but I will never hold a position on the long run because I just, I just have no faith in it. And I don't want to be sit on something like Luna coin and, and lose more than 100% of my investment. I, I know you will tell me that's impossible, but when I looked at the chart, it went down that much that my ticket said that it was 100%. And they said that, and even when it went even lower, it still said 100%. So the, the loss is so huge that there's nothing left. You are totally worthless. It's totally worthless what, what you had. And it was, uh, if I'm, uh, I think it, it was crypt, uh, on the coin market cap, it was, it was uh, the, uh, the fifth crypto. So, and so it had a huge, huge market cap. And it went to zero. So I, I just, it's just, I mean, my, my objective in my trading business is not to be a zero. If I take the risk of ruin and I lose everything, I'm at zero. And with zero, it will be very hard to, to make it back, to make a comeback. Because when you have zero and you have no capital, you cannot trade anymore. There's, uh, there's no tomorrow for you. So then it's over. The, then I won't make any videos. I won't look at charts anymore because I cannot be in the business anymore. Okay, And I, want, I don't want to starve to death. <laughs> so I, I cannot just uh, play around and have fun and tell every, every 15 days somebody about a new altcoin and how the fundamentals are huge and very solid and all that nonsense. nonsense. Uh, that I hear all the time from people. It's very sad because they're not that dumb. I mean, uh, a proof of that is that they listen to me. A proof of that is that they even are my private clients. And then they come to me and uh, give me all the BS about how great their, their last altcoin pick is and how solid the, uh, those fundamentals are. And they never, 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 never. Unfortunately, they, they are not. You know, decentralization is something very hard to achieve. And unless Bitcoin, nothing else did achieve it. Everything else is centralized coin. It means it has so it has it has somebody who, who pulls the triggers, who does whatever he wants. And from a security point of view, code and so on, it is extremely risky. So you take take huge risk and you will probably not outperform. Um, Bitcoin, uh, buy a whole strategy on Bitcoin. You probably won't outperform it on the long run. On the short run, you might, but on the long run, you won't. I'm looking on, on my future. I'm in quite good health right now. And even if I'm not that young, I'm, I'm already old, um, relatively old. Uh, and I only started, unfortunately, with trading very, uh, very late because before that I was studying at university and had other stuff to do. Uh, I, I discovered trading uh, quite late. I didn't have any parents who taught me or anything else. If I had kids, I would tell them, I would teach them to, to read charts uh, at a very young age. If possible, at six, eight years, I would tell them to, to read charts and start trading. I would uh, tell them if you want your your pocket money, you have to make it in, in the market. So tell me if you want to take a long or a short position. And since he wants his po pocket money, he will start thinking about the market and he will start trying to be on the winning side of a trade. Uh, uh, so I would teach them at a very young age. So when they are 18, they, they know everything they need to know about trading or 16 or 12, they know everything they, they need to know and can start trading and make real money. So I would tell them and teach them that. But I didn't have that. I had nobody, never, ever talked uh, to me about trading. So it took decades, 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 decades for me to discover trading and read some books and study it. Um, but I'm the, the, the optimistic point of view is that I'm still in good health and I still can... Uh, maybe I don't want to be uh, to to live extremely long. I'm a stoic man, uh, but I maybe it is a possibility that I live still a couple of decades, and I can and if my if I don't lose my brain, if I don't get any disease, 
and I still can think correctly, then I could be trading until the day of my death. So that's, that could be a quite a long period of time. Uh, I still have ahead a couple of decades at, le uh, at least are uh, possible. I don't know, I might die today or tomorrow, but a couple of de decades are not impossible. So this, this is a, communi uh, a community. I talk to you, I take time out, out, out of my day talking to you. So when you see something interesting happening, why don't you talk about it? Just say, look at Luna, uh, it is crashing, okay? <laughs> I mean, I would, I, I won't do it, okay? Because I, I will get uh, uh, all the, the spams and all the nonsense. But I, I even would pay you money to give me that kind of tip, okay? I won't do it. Uh, that's just, that's just um, uh, by that, I mean, to me, it's important. And I'll try in exchange to do a lot of you, for you. I try to post free stuff. Um, according to my disponibility. If I'm trading the whole day, if I have a four position open and I have to check them every 10 minutes, uh, it's, it's impossible to be uh, in the at the same time doing an intervention, a YouTube uh, intervention for you guys. But I try to do my best. And if I can manage, if there's a period or where I'm out of most of my positions and I have only one or two open, maybe I can do a fast intervention and talk to you. So I try to do a lot for you. And in, in exchange, you, you leave me a like and you, you sometimes uh, tell me what's happening because I don't read the news. I never read the news. And you have to tell me that soon. As soon as you know what happens to Luna, you have to inform me because then I can start trading it if I consider that there's opportunity in trading it. Okay, so thanks a lot. This introduction was long, but I think it's interesting talking about those subjects. And now I give you what I promise, an, um, an update on the, the stock market. So let me first share my screen and let's, uh, let's take a look at my disclaimer as always, so that you are aware that there are risk involved in trading and my risk warning. Uh, the link is in the description. And I briefly talk about my services because they are extremely important if you're an investor or an um, trader, then you should have that. So what I will offer you is an indicator. An indicator is live edit wave, um, edit wave, so you get updates live. So every day I update it, it uh, Bitcoin, I update, between one and three times a day, depending on what is happening and how much uh, changes I do, uh, uh, I make on the charts on Bitcoin. And on um, with stocks and gold, you get one update because they move less. So it does not require that much updates. So you get one update. So you get three markets and that will cost you 20 USD a month. If you're interested, you become a member of my free Telegram group and just let me know that you're interested and then I provide you the instruction on how to become a member. I also, from time to time, talk about Ichimoku because Ichimoku is great for entry points, exit points, and trading stop loss points. So sometimes I also talk about Ichimoku. And the last thing that I need to have time to do it is one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I provide one-on-one -on -one coaching for my clients and you get a huge discount if you are already a private client of mine. So if you subscribe to the live Elite Wave updates, you get a huge discount on my coaching. And that being said, I would kindly ask of you to be so kind to like and comment, that is extremely important because if you want me to provide you free stuff, people have to discover my channel and people have to watch. If nobody knows about me and nobody watches my channel um, and nobody comments, then my channel is dead. If my channel is dead, the market tells me that there is no point in me taking time out of my day and, and talking to you. Then I should do, um, put more time in reading books or doing some research but I should not be 
on YouTube talking to you. So if you want more free stuff in the future, you have to like. Now, I have lost a chart. So let me see if I can if I can put it back. Chrome Web Store. So you see how, how you find it. You go on the Chrome Web Store. And then I think it's called YouTube and endorsements. I think it's called like that. I think it's this one. Yes, it's this one. So now it's back. I've lost a chart. So somehow I have closed it even if I didn't want to close it. So to like my videos, it's extremely simple. It cannot be more simple. You, you just uh, download this extension on any Chrome web browser and you install it. You press the add uh, that extension, uh, extension. Then you get um, the icon here, just as I have a couple of here. You get that icon on the top and you it asks you if you would like to uh, to automatically like my channel and you just put yes. And every time you click on my channel, you will, uh, every time you watch one of my intervention, you will automatically like. I do that for everybody who I think is worth some merits. And the if I watch them, then they have some kind of merits and then I, I will like their, their videos every time I click on them automatically, thanks to that extension. And you should do the same. So please do that. And now let's take a look at the SMP. So the SMP is closed right now because it's the weekend and it's not trading hours. But let's take a look at the 50 minute chart of Ichiboku and see how it is looking. So here you were bearish because you were under the cloud and here you are now bullish because you are over the cloud. So you could have entered probably, because I think that here, all the conditions were met. You could have entered once you went above the top of that candle because it's the breakout candle. So uh, the condition that have to be met is first, you have to have a Kumo breakout and that happened on that candle. You went above the cloud. You have to have the future Kuno, Kumo who is green. It probably was the case here. You have to have the Chico which is fear of any price interaction, clear of price. And that was the case. Well, at that time, Chico was here, not up there, but here. And it was in it way broke through uh, the price. So at that, at that time, it was clear of price. And the Tenken, those stats, and the Kijuin must be in the right order, and price must be above them. And that was also the case here. So you met all the conditions to go long. So you could be in a long trade right now. In that case, your stop loss would be below the Kijuin. And right now the Kijuin is here. On that candle, it was here. And on this, on the last candle, it is here. So your stop loss would be below it. So I would put a little below the Kijuin. No, that's not what I want. I would put a little below the Kijuin. So I would take the super trend, which is below the Kijuin right now and i would put the stop loss here if i trade the 50 minute chart on the stop uh, stop market so i could be long according to ichimoku so now let's see what my edit wave count tells you here we have uh, the same chart again the 50 minutes and we have the edit wave count so if I don't zoom on and I only look at the last price movement, we had a wave three here, a wave four up here, and then a wave five down. It was an ending diagonal. One, two, three, four, and five. And every wave, every the internal wave were three waves. A, B, C every time. Here also. A, B. C. So that's what we had. And even here you had A, B, C, A, B, 
C. So you have three waves in it for the ending diagonal. And then we had probably a wave E, A, and a wave B. Now, could it be, could that be a bigger top, a button, a lasting button? And that be only wave one and wave two. That's not impossible because I don't have, I don't know <laughs> what the higher labeling is. So I know that this is a wave five, but I don't know of what. So I don't know if that's the end of the um, correction or if the bear market of we will trace out as I put it here. Right now I've put an A, B, C, or if you trace out an A, B, C and then go down again. So I'm not sure about that, but we have to decide at a point in time, we have to decide if we get only a correction, a corrective move, an ABC, or if it will be more. So if I can count five waves, right now I can't. I can only count one, two, and maybe we are in the process of accomplishing three, wave three. But if I can see, count five waves, then that would be a clue that we are turning bullish. The second possibility to find out, and the second clue that we would get is if we trace more than 50%. So normally 50% is not that important, but if it is bearish, so this is only maybe wave one and we get wave two, okay? And then we go uh, down in wave three, we break down in wave three. If that happens, then there's a rule because we, if I zoom out, you will see that we have a couple of one of twos in case if it, it is bearish one, two is to the down, downside. So one, two, and again, one, two, and again, one, two. And when you have a one and a two, and below it, you have again, a one and a two. Uh, if you look at the, at the corrective move of the one, two, how many percentage it corrected, it must be bigger than the, the one below it. And the last one corrected around 50%. So this one should correct less than 50%. Okay, that's why I did put bulls with VS bears. And if we go above the 50% retracement, then the probability increases that this, that is not an ABC, as I've put it here. Uh, sorry for that. The probability that this is not an A, B, C, but a one, two, and we in the process of accomplishing three increases. Okay, but that only increases once we are above the fifty percent retracement of that wave, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe an A, maybe an one, whatever. If we retrace that 50% uh, of that wave, those five wave downs, one, uh, there's a two somewhere here, three, four, and five. Once we retrace 50% of that move, we go above 50%, then the probability that it is bullish increases. So that's a line in the sand, and that will help me and then the second clue would be, of course, if you get five waves. Now, let's say we are still bearish and that I've labeled it correctly and that we have an A, B, C. If that's the case, and we have an A, B, C, two uh, questions arri arrive, uh, arise. The first one is, is wave B actually over? Because we could, that could be only wave A, that could be wave B, and we could still get wave C below 3979. Um, okay. So what I mean is, is wave B over or not? So the alternate count, count here would be that wave B is not over. In other words, that we still get one more low and here, and I'll have to move wave B to the side. And once that law is registered, we would go up in wave C. 
Okay. So the the question is is wave B over or do we uh, or, or not? If it's not, then we go down again. But it, if it's over, we we go up to the fifty percent. And then the question is, do we stay below the fifty percent level, or do we go above it? If we stay below. 40, uh, 4,083, if we stay below that level, then it is bearish. If you go above it, then we have a clue that it might be bullish and that might be a lasting bottom. Now, if I look at sentiment and, and other indicators, I won't show you, but if I look at those, it and divergence, just it, it seems like we could be having a bottom. It seems like this could be a low of some kind of, con of consequence and that we go low higher. But the first thing that I have to watch on Monday is if we, 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 we trace more than 50% or not. More than 50% it is bullish. If we don't retrace 50%, it, it is extremely bearish. So I have to see that. And once I know that, I have to trade accordingly to it. So let me stop the screen share and make my conclusion for today. So thank you a lot for watching. It was a pleasure talking to you about trading because it's something that fascinates me. And I'm very fascinated about it. It's very hard for me to not look at charts and analyze them. Um, this weekend, uh, a couple of friends asked me to pass and I, and I took out my tab and I said, yes, I will talk to you, but I have an open position. I will also look at the market. So I did talk to them, but I also, I also kept an eye on the market to know if I have to close out my position. I'm just telling you that because trading is really something that fascinates me that I find extremely interesting and extremely rewarding. Um, because of course the, the monetary gains, but not just that, just also because intellectually, I find it extremely interesting to learn real stuff about the market. Not the kind of BS you, you hear about talking heads on TV. I heard an expert talking about, because I have to do some research about you Luna before trading it. So I did some research and I found an expert. And the expert told me that he really believes in the fundamentals of Luna. And that's a pity in what happens to Luna because Luna was everything he standed for. Uh, that's the kind of BS I had to listen to when I listened to that expert on TV. And he said, the upside on Luna is huge. So he went long, uh, he went long at $1 on, on Luna. When Luna went down to zero 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 uh, five cents. <laughs> so he did extremely, but extremely well on his position, of course. And if he tells you that it was one dollar, it's just because the the uh, it um, the TV show was live at that time, and at the time you weren't at one dollar. He probably tried at 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 thirty bucks, then at fifteen bucks, then at ten bucks. Uh, then at five bucks and at finally at one bucks. And even uh, when he bought at, long, uh, at, at one bucks, we still went down to zero, 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 five. <laughs> so it was, it was funny, but he's the big expert and millions of people will listen to him as it, if he's a guru and knows everything and is some kind of genius. Anyways, it was fun. Um, so I, I like real trading and real people who, who, if possible, are successful, but at least know a lot about what, what they, they, are, they are doing and talking about. But real, real people who, who really know a lot, not just the talking heads on, on um, TV who have some diplomas but are incapable of making, of being, um, of making any money in the markets. I, I hate those people who show off all the time and are actually very bad analysts, the worst kind of analysts you can find on earth. They have no clue about trading 
at all, but they still are the huge experts and everybody just listens to them as if they were Jesus. Anyways, <laughs> so thanks a lot for watching. I, I, I enjoyed it and I'll try to make uh, so, uh, an update as soon as possible. I don't know when it is. I hope I'll make, I will be able to do one during the week. If I can't, then I'll do it again on weekends because the markets are closed. And since they are closed, I have less open positions and uh, I have more time to talk to you. Now, um, like, comment. From time to time, I'll take a look at the comments uh, on YouTube. Not very often, but from time to time, I will. And become a member of my free Telegram group just to have a second way of communicating with me. If you type on YouTube a comment, I might read it in six months uh, or in two months or in two weeks. Uh, I don't know when I will look at uh, the comments on YouTube because YouTube is an extremely uh, scammy place. Uh, all the scammers are on it and all the hate. You, YouTube is, uh, the comment section on YouTube is, it's not very friendly and not very interesting most of the time. You might be great and you might put a good comment uh, on YouTube, but it's like one comment out of uh, 10 or 100 that is, is, is worth anything. So if you tell me something on, on YouTube, I won't see it. But if you are a member of my free Telegram group and you comment, then I will see it. And on my free Telegram group, if people misbehave, I can just ban them. So it, it is much better. Uh, Telegram is a much better place to, it, if you want to talk to me, use Telegram. I won't see it on YouTube immediately. I will see it a couple of months after you posted a comment. So, so become a, free, uh, a member of my free Telegram group to have a second way of communicating with me. You never know when that is useful. And if you're interested in my services, then let me know and I will provide you the instruction. Now have a great week and see you soon. Bye-bye.